this video we'll be giving concise overviews of every single character in Tekken 7, including DLC. Each character we've designated a primary, secondary, and tertiary typing. If you're confused about the typings, please check our last video, Tekken Archetypes, for clarification. Enjoy! Akuma, or Goki, hailing from Street Fighter, is one of the most unique and controversial additions to Tekken 7's roster. Along with Geese and Elisa, he's one of three characters with a meter bar, distinct jump mechanics, and projectile zoning. Of the three meter characters, Akuma is most focused on damaging, ambiguous 50-50 mix-ups through his iconic demon flip and kurubushi kick, a fast low that combos into his special moves at close range. Akuma is able to bend and twist the conventional rules of Tekken once he has meter in stock. This allows him to get full launch punishes from merely a jab, muscle through pressure with an invincible reversal, and most notably, greatly enhances both the safety and damage output of his mix-ups. Even without meter, Akuma is still a threat thanks to his powerful pokes, such as the Ryujin Kyaku. These allow him to chip off damage while building all-important meter. Akuma's Go Hadoken, Ten Makure Tsukiyaku, and the threat of his jumps also allow him to both approach and control space from a distance. Be warned though that Akuma is one of the most executionally demanding characters in Tekken 7, and extremely unorthodox. But for those willing to put in the time and dedication, the Raging Demon has much to offer. <laughs> Alisa, an android created in the image of Dr. Boskonovich's deceased daughter, is both a graceful and brutal fighter who's good at dictating the pace of a match. Her neutral stance with head and legs tucked in is naturally evasive, and her movement, which includes both her backdash and her sidestep, is well above average. This allows Alisa to slip out of pressure more easily and also keep the battle in the mid-range where she excels. Alisa boasts an arsenal of long-range pokes to chip away at opponents who try to approach, such as Deep Link. These are complemented by her easy-to-use whiff punishes, which are perfect for punishing frustrated opponents who overextend. Alisa has absolutely no problem closing the gap, however, thanks to her linear punch and boot stance, which allow her to launch an offensive from range. Traditionally, Alisa has struggled when at a life deficit due to her low damage pokes and lack of viable power lows. However, over the course of Tekken 7's competitive life, destructive form has been made much more powerful. This is scary, but requires the opponent to make a mistake first for Alisa to use properly. Alisa is generally quite easy to use, but has a few minor execution requirements, and proper usage of her stance requires a bit of subtlety. If you want to dance all over your enemies, while occasionally ripping them to shreds with chainsaws, then join Alisa Boskonovich in her deadly ballet. <laughs> Anna Williams, bitter rival of her sister, Nina Williams, is an aggressive, all-or-nothing gambler's character with nothing to lose. She's very good at closing the gap with tools like Assassin's Dagger and Executioner. Once in, Anna can bully opponents with her annoying pokes and lockdown lows. What really sets her apart, though, are her dangerous 50-50 mix-ups. At the core of Anna's game plan is the right-handed sweep, an incredibly fast low from Crouch that leads to full combos, which you can mix up with a plethora of mids. To further rattle conditioned opponents, Anna also has the Chaos Judgment stance. She can transition into this from a variety of moves, and it allows her to snowball rounds quite quickly from some oppressive standing mix-ups. Anna is all about commitment, though. She's very punishable, and her tracking is quite poor, meaning she can fall flat on her face just as much as she can steal rounds, so players will need to be confident in their reads. Anna is perhaps the most coin-flippy character in Tekken, making her game plan very simple. If you feel like Lady Luck is on your side, or are just into stepping on the opponent's genitals, then try rolling the dice with Anna Williams. Open wide. Up 
Armor King, the dark, enigmatic shadow to King, is one of the most rounded characters in Tekken 7, with a focus on throws and grappling. Along with King, he's the only other character to have a truly ambiguous throw mix-up between the Giant Swing and the Shining Wizard, along with a wide, varied kit of damaging throws and multi-grabs. Armor King's most distinctive move is the Shadow Lariat, which is a strong approach tool. On top of this, he also has a fairly robust set of pokes, which he can use to chip away at opponents and set up for a whiff punish. Armor King's main whiff punisher is the Dark Upper, which is very similar to the Mishima Godfist. Armor King also has a traditional wave dash, which reinforces his already strong approach, and the recent improvements to Underhanded make keeping Armor King out even harder, since it's now much more evasive and safer. While Armor King boasts a rounded toolkit and high combo damage, there's nothing here that another character doesn't do better in some way. He's also quite a technical character. Besides requiring strong fundamentals to make the most out of, masking his throw inputs to make them truly ambiguous is quite challenging, and players will also need to master the wave dash. If you're looking for a versatile, fundamentals-focused character with a preference for grabs and a dash of Mishima, then Armor King ticks all the boxes. Asuka Kazama, the brash and arrogant successor to the Kazama Ryu style, is a defensive fighter who excels at stealing the opponent's turn. Asuka can make it very difficult for opponents to get near her thanks to her strong keep-out moves and long-range pokes, many of which either launch or deal extra damage on counter-hit. This is complemented by an easy-to-use whiff punisher in Demon Slayer, which can even be cancelled if you feel you need to bail and keep Asuka safe, or instead go for a quick crouching mix-up. Once the opponent finally manages to close the gap though, their troubles have only just begun as Asuka packs an arsenal of evasive tools designed to slip through their pressure, such as Dragon Wheel Kick and Mist Palm Thrust. This is supplemented by her infamous reversal, launching Punch and Kick Sabakis, as well as one of the better power crushes in Tekken 7 with Exorciser, which also doubles up as a wall bounce. Asuka's own pressure is somewhat lacking. She has the worst jab in the game since it doesn't even give advantage on block, forcing her to commit to strings. She also lacks any natural jab strings, making her block punishment quite weak. This emphasizes trying to read attacks rather than block them, which also makes her innately more committal. No other character in the game is better at denying the opponent and making them think twice about how they attack. So, if you believe that a strong defense makes the best offense, then Asuka Kazama is for you. Okay. Bob Richards, embodying speed and weight, is a, well, <laughs> rounded fighter who boasts many of the strengths of a Mishima, but is considerably easier to use. Bob sports an incredible arsenal of simple but effective pokes. While they tend to be a little bit slower than some other poking characters, they make up for it with sheer range and robust, chunky hitboxes. He couples this with some thick mids and greasy lows to constantly keep the opponent guessing. Bob can also approach with a wave dash, then feast upon the whiffs of his enemies and launch with the new and improved Langwasher. While his toolkit isn't quite as meaty as a traditional Mishima, he has enough to be considered an illegitimate son. Well, more so than Lars, anyway. And despite his girth, he's also a slippery little sausage, with a surprising amount of evasive get-out-of-jail-free cards. Bob has a veritable buffet of powerful moves, but if he does have a flaw, it's that they can only be considered 4-star. There's no gourmet cuisine to be found here. Aside from learning how to wave dash, which isn't strictly necessary, he's also quite easy to use. If you're looking for a simple but effective character to roll over your opponent's defense, then book a table with Bob Richards. Cold, 
calculating, efficient, brutal. Brian is a powerhouse of a character who excels in the mid-range and snowballing rounds through deadly but technical setups. Opponents will have a tough time getting near Brian thanks to his middle sidekick and the notorious orbital heel, which boasts an insanely disjointed hitbox. Brian can also put the fear into defensive opponents with lockdown tools such as the notorious hatchet kick and chopping elbow. A unifying theme behind nearly all of Brian's best moves is that they're also tremendously more rewarding on counter hit. What really sets Brian apart, though, is his ability to steal rounds with his signature taunt setups, which blows through the opponent's defenses for a full launch. The iconic taunt jet upper is absurdly powerful, but also one of the hardest techniques to master in the game. Brian is fairly simple to use in an intermediate level, but maximizing his potential is incredibly difficult. He has a lot of executional requirements, with even movement being a challenge due to being a backsway character, while the slow startup on his best moves demands good placement and fundamentals. If you're willing to put in the time, though, the undead cyborg is a relentlessly oppressive force to be reckoned with. <laughs> Claudio Serafino, leader of the Archers of Sirius, is an extraordinarily simple but rather unique character who runs his game plan around a trio of core tools. Claudio has absolutely no problem both approaching and pressuring from tremendous ranges with Ira, which is also very damaging on hit. He can also easily and effectively control space with Vanishing Storm and punish mistakes with the Sky Slash Nova. After landing certain key moves, Claudio gains access to Starburst. This buffs his ability to control space even further with Cross Arm Strike, whilst also making his pressure game and damage outputs in combos stronger. Claudio's greatest strength is also his biggest weakness. Pivoting his game plan around a small selection of moves allows you to focus more on the opponent, but also makes you more predictable. He also lacks strong lows outside the wall, Though at the wall, the whiff confirmable Dispel Magic and Luxuria become massive threats. Claudio's game plan is incredibly basic, though there are some execution requirements needed to perform repeated close range ira and force opponents towards the wall. If you're looking for a simple but effective character who can take a lot of the stress of the spacing game for you, then look no further than Claudio Serafino. <laughs> When the Devil Gene activates in Jin Kazama, he transforms into Devil Jin. Along with Kazuya and Heihachi, Devil Jin is one of the three core Mishima characters. They all share the Electric Wind God Fist, an incredible tool with a variety of offensive and defensive applications, Flash Punch Combo, one of the best jab strings in the game, and the Wave Dash to quickly approach and enforce their mix up game. Devil Jin is the most complete and versatile of all the Mishimas. He combines strong poking tools such as the Twin Lancer and Malicious Mace with a powerful mix-up game to devastating effect. In particular, his launching Hell Sweep can open up even the most stalwart defense and either takes opponents to the wall or results in ridiculous snowballing Okizeme situations. These are complemented by powerful mids such as the Wraith Kick, Demon's Paw, and Tsujikaze, a terrifying cancelable wall bounce. Devil Jin even has some strong evasive tools such as Samsara to swoop out of sticky situations. His only real weakness is that by deriving his strength from the Mishima bloodline, he exacts a heavy toll on the player. Though Devil Jin is the simplest and most practical of all the Mishimas, he is by no means easy to use requiring solid fundamentals and practiced execution to be successful with. If you're willing to pay the price, though, the devil will reward you handsomely. (laughs) 
Sergei Dragunov, the White Angel of Death, is an oppressive lockdown character who's good at freezing you in place while slowly chipping away at your health. Core to his game plan is the Russian Assault, which allows Dragunov to approach from range and start pressuring the opponent. Up close, he can enforce some strong pressure with Bunker Buster Elbow, Blizzard Hammer, and Razor, which is hard to escape or contest due to its range, tracking, evasion, and how it forces crouch on hit. If the opponent dares to make a mistake, Dragunov has an array of powerful punishers to bring them to their knees. Special note must also go to his powerful throw and grapple game. Dragunov struggles to play defensively though, and can only get meaningful damage by going in, which can make him somewhat predictable. This is further exacerbated by how linear a lot of his core moves are. While Dragunov's game plan is relatively straightforward, repeated close-range Russian assaults can be quite tricky, as well as some of his counter-hit confirms and combo pickups. If you enjoy putting fear into the heart of your opponents with some cold-blooded offense, then consider siding with the Russian Spetsnaz, Sergei Dragunov. Eddie Gordo, Master of Capoeira, is a slippery, evasive character who's very good at running away, keeping opponents at bay, and knocking them off their feet with some tricky mix-ups. While he lacks a usable sidestep, he has an extraordinarily fast backdash which allows Eddie to quickly create space. He can also make it an absolute nightmare for opponents to get near him with his long legs and wheel kicks. Negativa and to a lesser extent handstand stance also make Eddie quite hard to punish, and in some cases even touch. You'll need to have specialized matchup knowledge to know how to hit Eddie out of these, which can be quite frustrating. Eddie also has some powerful, albeit risky mix-ups from these stances to open up passive players, further emphasizing the need to learn the matchup so you know when and how to disengage from these situations. When you go up against a player familiar with Eddie's tricks though, you'll need a lot of creativity and strong conditioning skills to be successful with him. If you like unorthodox, evasive characters with an emphasis on keep-out and sporadic mix-ups, then you'll enjoy dancing to the beat of Eddie Gordo's tune. Vamos acabar com isso agora. Elisa, along with Akuma and Geese, is one of three characters with a meter bar. Out of all of them, Elisa plays the slowest, most patient game. She coaxes and teases opponents to get near her through a wall of dark waves and powerful counter-hit moves, and can punish over-eager approaches by jumping back and raining down on them with the dark cannon. All the while, Elisa is slowly building meter, and once she has a stock, she can effortlessly glide in from a distance and put the opponent in a threatening mix-up situation. If she guesses correctly, Elisa then drags her prey to the wall to finish them off with her terrifying wall game. Like Akuma, Elisa can also spend meter on an invincible reversal to get opponents off her back, or launch punish from a jab, but this is more expensive since it requires her to do her super, the bloody horn. Elisa's pokes are quite lackluster though, and without meter, she needs to take tremendous risks for even minor damage. She's also quite a technical character to play, requiring a steady hand and strong execution, especially if you want to make the most of her dark cannon pressure. If you're looking for a character who can both stall approaches effectively and close the gap easily, then Elisa will sing you a sweet lullaby. Let the darkness consume <laughs> Fakum Ram is a controversial character. He's an imposing beast of a man, easily sporting the tallest height, longest limbs, and tiniest head of the roster. Unusually for the long reach archetype, he can convert from his ranged pokes such as Rising Thunder and Teep 
into real, meaningful pressure and canned mix-ups which are hard to defend against. This makes him a real bully of a character, especially when you factor in his unique guard breaks, which add another layer to his mix-ups when at the wall. Once opponents manage to break through this fortress though, Fakumrab struggles to deal with pressure at close range. His sidestep is poor, his panic moves are incredibly committal, and his lack of high crush moves is a particular weakness. He's a very direct and easy character to use though, with his strengths being simple to understand and his weaknesses neatly overlapping with some of the more technical aspects of Tekken. If you want to mercilessly bully and harass opponents from a distance, then get in the cell with Fakum Rob. Feng Wei is very versatile, but what really underpins and defines his moveset is evasion. He's an incredibly slippery character, hard to pressure thanks to Kempo stance and moves like evading palm strike, whilst also being difficult to keep out due to the low hurt boxes on moves like piercing arrow and landslide. Feng is especially good at chipping away at opponents and baiting them into counter hits with his strong pokes but if he's at a real life deficit, then he can gamble for more rewarding but riskier mix-ups, especially from back turn. Feng's main weakness is that a lot of his moves are quite susceptible to being sidestepped, especially to the left. While he doesn't really have any tight execution, his move list is wide with many specialized tools, so it will take some time to get the most out of him. If you're looking for a fluid, flexible character who's adept at shifting around the opponent's pressure, then rise above the clouds with Feng Wei. Yeah. Yeah. Gunryu is an oppressive, even overbearing character who sticks to you like glue and is very hard to shake off once he gets close. Core to his game is the kick and pull, a fast low that leaves Gunryu at a heavily advantageous position. From here, he can continue chipping away or fish for a big launch with Tsukiyage Harite, which is quite hard to punish due to the threat of follow-ups. Gunryu can also catch lazy movement with Taiko Smash, a quick launcher which is hard to sidestep and comes from a dash. He's very good at forcing opponents towards the wall with moves like Rocket Palms. Along with Kick and Pull, he can also lock down opponents with plus on block mids like Rock Cleaving Palm and create ambiguous mix-up situations between Strong Open Palm and Thunder Palm, which are quite hard to distinguish from one another. This is especially dangerous near the wall. Gunryu's main weakness is that he's quite sluggish. His jabs are slower than any other character in the game, but yield better advantage on block or hit. Despite his ease of use in terms of game plan and execution, this twist to one of his core tools makes him slightly specialized. His weirdness can work in your favor though, as Gunryu is consistently one of the most unpopular characters in any Tekken he's in, and most people won't be familiar with the matchup. If you're looking for an oddball who wants to cling tight to his opponents, and maybe even sweep them off their feet, then book a date with Gunryu. <laughs> Geese Howard, King of Southtown, is perhaps the most orthodox character out of the trio that uses meter. Whereas Akuma and Elisa mostly spend bar to make their mix-ups more powerful, Geese uses it for raw, unbridled power. Quite simply, if Geese touches you once he has stock, you blow up. Whilst building meter, Geese has an incredible set of pokes and tracking moves to chip away at opponents with many of which become launches on counter hit, or simply keep them at bay with the Repuken and Shippuken. Geese can be an intimidating character to try and pressure as well, thanks to the Jyoden and Chudan Atemi. These are parries which yield full combos and switch sides upon successfully intercepting the opponent's move. This is particularly effective when Geese's back is to the wall, complementing his strong wall game. Further boosting Geese's extraordinary comeback factor is the Deadly Rave, by far the most damaging rage art in the game when tacked onto combos. 
there is some execution required to play Geese, but he's surprisingly easy to use, especially relative to his insane damage potential. Geese's biggest weakness is that his lows are either slow or risky outside the wall, and he's reliant on meter to launch punish characters. If you're looking for an absolute powerhouse of a character though, then stand up and know your place with Geese Howard. Gigas is a massive lumbering beast, boasting the longest arms in the game, paired with tiny little baby legs. Gigas' main strength is his sheer simplicity. This section will be a bit longer than other characters, and that's because we can literally sum up Gigas' entire game plan in a few minutes. His long-range jabs allow him to control space quite effectively, and also serve as an effective punisher from any range with the Iron Breaker. Aside from that, you basically play Gigas by assigning a random number generator to the forward button and then pressing right punch. You'll either get Mad Rampage, which is a high that combos on counter hit, Unchained Upper, a long range mid that's safe on block, or Charging Tackle, a slow plus on block mid. At close range, he has some simple but effective lockdown with Rusty Nail and Nail Gun, and a decent, albeit somewhat risky, low in End Mill, all of which are considerably more damaging on counter hit and a damaging throw in Overkill. Gigas' most unique attribute is the Enraged Howl, an armored move that recovers quickly and sometimes allows Gigas to punish otherwise unpunishable moves, and saves him from being bullied incessantly by long-range power mids like Dragunov's Russian Assault and Brian's Chopping Elbow, which other characters have to sidestep. Gigas can just flex through them and punish with a launch. Goliath is also an interesting way of opening up defensive players, with Gigas charging at the opponent with either an unblockable high or wall splatting mid. With Rage, the opponent usually has to guess between crouching or standing, but Jin can defuse both options with a simple parry. On paper, Gigas isn't very good, with skewed risk reward on many of his attacks and struggling with pressure due to his poor mobility but in practice, his range and ease of use makes him rather effective. If you're looking for a super simple and massively underrated character, to the point of practically being a meme, then run rampant with Gigas. Heihachi Mishima head of the Mishima Zaibatsu and Multiple Father of the Year Award recipient is the biggest bully out of the three Mishimas. The Tekken community often refers to him as the king of mids, and it's easy to see why. Fast tracking mids, slow heavy mids, safe counter hit mids, and big heavy plus on block mids. His right split kick is considerably stronger than Kazuya's, leaving opponents up close and personal after for continued harassment and if it connects on an opponent who's foolish enough to be crouching against Heihachi, he can land a free Twin Pistons for monstrous damage, especially at the wall. His Flash Punch combo is also the only one to wall splat. The price for having the best mids in the game though is that Heihachi's lows are quite lackluster. They're either immensely risky or don't carry proportional reward. Due to this, Heihachi is heavily reliant on wave dash timing mix-ups to force opponents towards the wall where he is at his best, as well as a strong grasp on how to bait opponents into whiffing through sidesteps. This is not to even mention his unique executional demands beyond even that of a Mishima, with the Omen Thunder Godfist. This all makes Heihachi one of the hardest characters to use at a competitive level. But if you're up for the challenge, and enjoy tossing your opponents around like a ragdoll, then side with the Mishima Zaibatsu and Heihachi Mishima. Horang, the cocky taekwondo biker from Korea, is a relentless rushdown character who blitzes opponents with a torrent of kicks before knocking them off their feet with some devastating mix-ups. Horang is constantly shifting between four stances. Left Flamingo, Right Flamingo, Left Stance, and Right Stance. This often leaves him at a sizable advantage right in the opponent's face. 
it's generally a very bad idea to try and contest Horong when he's rushing you down, which then opens you up to his 50-50s. He's also the proud owner of some of the best armored moves in the game. The notorious Backlash yields a full combo on hit and is very hard to punish, while Double Claymore allows him to advance while armored. It's also cancelable and has the rare distinction of being an armored string, allowing Horong to confirm into the follow-up after deflecting an attack. Horong's main weakness basically boils down to risk versus reward. While he seems incredibly oppressive at first, knowing the holes in his pressure and how to move around it means that a Horong needs to work especially hard against patient and knowledgeable players. This is exacerbated by his somewhat mediocre mid-range and space control. Horong's huge move list and shifting stance transitions make him quite a technical character to use, while he also has some tough executional requirements such as the Just Frame Skyrocket and Wave Dashing. He's considerably easier now than in previous games though, since all his stances basically lead to a 50-50, greatly streamlining his game plan. If you enjoy a high-octane, hyper-aggressive playstyle with lots of room to show off, then hitch a ride with Horong. Jack Seven is another simple but effective character with long range. Unlike everyone else on the roster, his lead jab is with the right hand, and he uses his massive arms to control space and keep opponents out. The Jackhammer lies at the mechanical heart of Jack's game plan. This is a threatening mid-range tool that deals good damage on hit, and on block leaves opponents at the perfect range for Jack to bait whiffs with the Savage Uppercut, an effective and easy-to-use Punisher or snuff approaches with Teolpen Blast. Jack also has some powerful lows to either steal the life lead or mount a comeback. Power Shovel and Debugger are your powerful but risky lows. Machine Gun Blast and Machine Gun Knuckle are annoying fast lows that give Jack an advantage on hit, the latter having the rare distinction of being a safe low and also being particularly oppressive when at the wall. Speaking of which, Jack is a dominating presence there, thanks to the Piston Gun Assault, Piston Gun Snipe, and Reactor Elbow, all of which are advantageous on block. To further discourage defensive play, Jack also has powerful throws for every arm, including a wall splatting throw. Jack shares the same weakness as with other big characters, that his mobility is quite limited, meaning he struggles with pressure up close. Also, many of his key moves are quite susceptible to being sidestepped, especially to the left. Jack is generally a very easy character to play, but his weird right-handed jab is a little slower than normal, making him slightly unorthodox, and there is some execution required to get max damage after a jackhammer on hit. If you enjoy a simple and methodical toolkit focused primarily around defensive play, then get your gears into action with Jack 7. When Jin Kazama represses the influence of the Devil Gene, he fights with his own unique style of Kyokushin Karate. Jin is one of the most rounded and versatile characters in Tekken 7, but with a slight leaning towards defensive play whilst also retaining elements of his aggressive Mishima heritage. His front thrust kick is a powerful mid-range tool that leads to combos on counter hit. The threat of this, along with his high right roundhouse, can make it difficult to approach him while the Electric Wind Hook Fist is an excellent whiff punisher. Along with this, Jin packs an arsenal of strong and robust pokes to chip away at opponents at close range, with the caveat that they're more susceptible to being backdashed and punished due to the stubby range on his arms. Jin also has the wave dash mix-ups that stem from his Mishima lineage but they're slightly easier to defend against, and not quite as intimidating as his devil-infused alter ego. One of Jin's most unique aspects is his parry, which allows him to turn moves that are normally safe or even advantageous into punishment opportunities. Jin is all around pretty amazing at everything, but the price of being an all-rounder is that he doesn't truly excel at anything. Adaptability, strong execution, and solid fundamentals are key to success with Jin, making him a difficult character to master. 
He also has unique challenges in learning optimal parry follow-ups, some very tight conversions off the front thrust kick, and his hook fist, unlike the Mishima God Fist, demands the Just Frame Electric version to operate as an effective punisher. If you're looking for a more defensively inclined hybrid Mishima, then purge your demons with Jin Kazama. Yeah. Josie Rizal, the kickboxer from the Philippines who wears her emotions on her sleeve, is an aggressive rushdown character who chips away at opponents while fishing for counter hits. She has absolutely no problems closing the gap thanks to the tremendous range on slide in stance, particularly slide in low kick, which she can mix up with either a launching elbow that's unsafe or a slower elbow that gives her the advantage even on block. Once in, Josie has a glut of canned mix-ups stemming from jab strings and mid-pokes into switch stance or slide in. It's generally recommended to respect these, since trying to retaliate with buttons will often get you hit by a big counter-hit launcher. Josie also has strong evasive tools such as Butterfly Edge, Sonic Upper, Sway Back Stance, and even a right punch parry which is quite effective against certain strings. These are all quite risky though. Speaking of, the risk-reward on Josie's can mix-ups is generally not in her favor, especially at high levels of play. There she turns into more of a defensive fighter, who focuses on keeping opponents out with her Magic 4, poking into Triana low, and whiff punishing with the long range on Sonic Upper. Josie has a relatively simple game plan, but converting from her double boomerang into a full combo is both very important and quite tricky. Josie is recommended for players who like to switch freely between rushdown pressure and defensive fundamentals, and also aren't afraid to let it all out sometimes. Julia Chang, the environmentalist streamer, is very good at getting in, staying in, and opening you up. Thanks to her swift step and all the various options from it, Julia can come flying in from a massive distance. Her signature party crasher also allows Julia to approach from mid-range and is very hard to move away from. The threat of the follow-up also makes it scary to challenge. Julia has a complete throw game, along with mad axes, a throw that's faster than normal, making it hard to break and meaning it can't be interrupted after a jab. Bow and Arrow also give her devastating mix-ups from Crouch, and she can spin from Shotgun into yet more lows and mids. Once she gets you on the floor though, Julia can easily snowball rounds thanks to her powerful Okizeme, and she's a true force of nature at the wall, thanks in no small part to War Drum, which is a wall-splatting low when spaced properly or on counter-hit. How Low Blow, which is actually a mid, leads to full wall-splat combos on opponents who dare Crouch, and the Double Palm Rush, a safe wall-bouncing mid with sizable pushback on block. Julia doesn't have many weaknesses, but while her pokes are very good at controlling space, they're quite low damage, so she needs to eventually take a risk. She also lacks a fast low poke that allows her to maintain momentum afterwards. With her best pokes all being multiple inputs, Playing Julia requires a steady, ongoing stream of execution, which can be quite tiring to maintain. Also, some of her combo conversions can be a little finicky. So, be sure to recycle and be mindful of your carbon footprint, otherwise Julia Chang is gonna mess you up. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Get ready! Katarina Alves is a super basic poking-oriented character who's perfect for beginners. The peck and slap string, yes that's what it's actually called, is central to her game plan. This has a huge hitbox and allows her to both pressure and set up whiffs for her to punish. The crane kick combo is also important, being a fast, ranged, easily confirmable mid-string. These can both transition into harrier stance to extend pressure, which is also a decent approach tool in and of itself. Whilst poking, Katarina also fishes for counter hits with Nimble Cutter, Greater Rear, Feather Chop, and the highly evasive yet somewhat risky Tucano Tail, since alert opponents can low parry it on reaction. 
Speaking of which, Katarina's lows are generally all very committal, but she does have a fairly annoying mix-up from Crouch to mount comebacks with. At higher levels, she's generally best played defensively though, thanks to her long legs, pushback on moves like Plover Kick, along with the sheer range on her main whiff punisher, the Wing Heel Kick. Thanks to her range and simple immediate game plan, Katarina is very easy to use, the only challenging things about her being optimal block punishment with Bird Chaser, which isn't strictly necessary, and understanding how to use Harrier to make certain strings safer. Katarina can do a bit of everything, doesn't really excel at anything, and is overall great to dip your toes into Tekken with. <laughs> Mishimas are notoriously hard to play. Not Mama Mishima though, who kindly spoon feeds you her somewhat bland but simple and nutritious homemade game plan. Kazumi runs on 3D Fighter fundamentals. The Mishima Flash Punch combo is an easily hit confirmable jab string that knocks down, making it great as both a punisher and pressure tool. Crimson Dawn is a fast mid with a damaging wall splatting follow up to discourage retaliation. Rolling Thunder is her go to low to maintain pressure and chip away at the opponent's health. This is all neatly complemented by her above average movement. Kazumi also has no problems controlling space and forcing opponents towards the wall from a distance with Lightning Flash and Diamond Flash, or just literally flying in to mix you up. The risk reward on this stance isn't great, but she can also fly out to disengage. Also, to keep opponents at bay from simply rushing in, she has one of the better Magic 4s in the game. Kazumi is overall very good at playing compact, which is the preferred style at high level play. She lacks big explosive lows though to make comebacks with, so you'll need to stay solid and consistent to be successful with her. Her moveset is simple to understand, being built around a set of core tools that complement one another nicely, and there are no real executional barriers. Main characters are usually the go-tos for beginners in fighting games. This is certainly not the case with Tekken's Mishimas, but Kazumi is the exception to that rule. Kazuya Mishima is perhaps the purest expression of the Mishima Ryu fighting style in Tekken 7. Lacking any kind of meaningful poking game, he's even more reliant on the Electric Wind Godfist than Heihachi or Devil Jin to run his game plan. Kazuya is all about big reads and big damage. He has arguably the most ambiguous mix-up from a wave dash, with both damaging lows and a safe launching mid in left splits kick. Kazuya's Hell Sweep and Devil Steel Pedal synergize effectively to create some beastly Okizeme loops. Hell Sweeps are very risky though, and at higher levels of play, Kazuya is more focused on chipping away with Stature Smash, Wave Dashing timing mix ups, and scoring massive damage with Abolishing Fist on counter hit. Though, the true potential of this is locked behind a serious execution hurdle, along with his, on paper, insane block punishment. Whatever level of play you're at though, you need to take risks with Kazuya. Unlike his father Heihachi who can keep you locked down all day with a barrage of mids, Kazuya strikes less often, but those strikes need to count. They're both hard characters to play, albeit in subtly different ways, requiring extensive matchup knowledge due to their lack of panic moves and an almost elite understanding of timing and movement to get the most out of. Favored golden boy Devil Jin has always been the Mishima better geared towards getting more consistent results at a competitive level due to his more rounded and practical toolkit. Kazuya though is very much for purists. His strengths and weaknesses are clear cut, while he lives and dies by core tech and fundamentals. King is a wrestling powerhouse, and about as close as you're ever going to get to a pure grappler in Tekken. It doesn't matter what you think about throws, because King is going to take you on a one-way ride to Suplex City if you don't know how to break them. Similar to Armor King, breaking between Giant Swing and the Shining Wizard is a pure gas. On top of that, the one true King 
also has a much wider set of chain throws, standing throws, mid throws, ground throws, air throws, floor break throws, wall splat throws, wall combo throws, hit throws, you name it. And King has a throw for the occasion. Good opponents aren't just going to stand around and take these though. Fortunately, King has an incredible set of pokes and homing moves to make them stay put. His elbow sting is perfect for conditioning opponents and buffering throws, while double hook disaster can give a full combo even at max delay on counter hit, though this is character dependent. Speaking of which, King has also been blessed with an incredible counter hit game, with many of his key moves giving full combos on counter hit. Particular mention must go out to lay off, a very unique move in that it doesn't actually do any damage by itself, but is a shockingly fast mid that pushes towards the wall and gives damaging combos on counter hits. King's movement isn't the best though, and he doesn't have great panic moves, meaning he can struggle with pressure. He's also quite technical at higher levels, masking his throws takes skill, and there's also some execution required behind some of his conversions and optimal combos. This is not to even mention his uniquely challenging wave dash, or the busy work of memorizing optimal character specific follow ups to double hook disaster. Recommending the mysterious Jaguar Mask Wrestler is pretty easy for aficionados of throws and grappling, though, since in this regard, King II is truly the King of Kings. <laughs> Kuma and Panda, who are almost exactly the same character aside from their rage art and a few very obscure character interactions, are fun, quirky, oddball characters. Similar to Jack and Gigas, they have massive reach on their arms, which lends them naturally to a defensive playstyle. They can use their long range jab to control space while chipping away with Bear Lariat then easily punish whiffs with Kuma Muso and Anger Hook, which have enormous range. The bears also have lots of party tricks up their sleeve, primarily through the hunting stance and their rolls. These can be a massive nuisance against unprepared opponents, but at higher levels, they're mostly used to just occasionally chip away with some light pressure. The bears deal fairly well with a linear offense due to G-Clef Cannon and Bear Slash, but their poor tracking moves mean they can really struggle against more layered pressure that integrates sidestepping. Due to their unusual frame, they're also vulnerable to damaging bear specific combos, but at the same time, some staples will miss against them, and since their feet are tucked in, they're less vulnerable to lows. The bears are also quite a rare breed, so it's likely that your opponent will be unfamiliar with the matchup, and this applies to all levels of play. If you want a fun, unorthodox character and think you're smarter than the average bear, then roll on down to the party with Kuma and Panda. Kunimitsu, the mischievous Kunoichi, is a blindingly fast character who's a threat from anywhere on the screen. She can both create space and close the gap extremely quickly thanks to her nimble backdash and Setsunagake stunts, which propels her forward at lightning speed. From this, she has a multitude of options to both keep opponents on their toes like the Kasumi Slash, a safe mid count hit launcher, and also knock them off their feet with her powerful 50-50 mix-ups from Crouch. Up close, Kunimitsu also has a wide selection of pokes to chip away at opponents while both setting up for whiff punishment opportunities and even more mix-ups. Her throw game from back turned is particularly lethal. Kunimitsu can be exhausting to play against since there's absolutely nowhere on the screen where you're safe from her. She tends to struggle against more patient, defensive-minded players though since the risk-reward on many of her mix-ups is not in her favor. More so than any other character, Kunimitsu's toolkit plays the spacing game for her, making her relatively easy to use. And while she has little in the way of execution, some of her staple combos are pretty inconsistent. If you enjoy moving around the arena at lightning speeds, devious ninja trickery, and don't mind taking the occasional risk, then outfox your opponents with Kunimitsu. <laughs>
Lars Alexanderson, Heihachi's illegitimate son and owner of either the most spectacular or ridiculous haircut in the series depending on your point of view, is an aggressive character who thrives on momentum. The foundation of Lars's game are his pokes and keeping opponents locked in place with Chevron Slash. If he manages to make the opponent whiff a big attack, then Arc Blast is a good tool to use after a sidestep. He can naturally transition from his pokes into his flashy mix-ups quite fluidly, especially from crouch. Lars can also dart in from mid-range with dynamic entry to start his mix-ups, with the transition into silent entry adding another layer to the mind games. Many of Lars's best tools are quite evasive, such as Shadow Cutter and Flashing Strike which go under highs, and the notoriously evasive Lightning Screw. Also, if Lars lands a combo on you, he's almost certainly taking you to the wall with his preposterous wall carry. Lars's main weakness is how incredibly committal he is. Most of his panic moves and lows are launch punishable, and he's also highly susceptible to being sidestepped. Lars is a good character for beginners with a simple game plan and execution. If you want to blitz with the opponent's defenses and don't mind living on the razor's edge, then ride the lightning with Lars Alexanderson. Martial Law is the progenitor of an archetype centered around fast pokes, strong counter hit tools, and a slide to break down defenses, with Lee and Shaheen also being based around Law as a template. Of this trio, OG Law is most focused around Rushdown and is also arguably the most versatile. His Dragon Sign stance allows him to cancel certain key moves into continued pressure on block, while Shin Crusher and Dragon Hammer are very good at locking the opponent down and setting them up for counter hits. Law is also quite hard to approach or even attack at close range due to his strong keep out tools, as well as his signature left right to knee, parries, and bevy of panic moves. His ability to play keep out is also bolstered by the pressing kick combo, one of the finest punishers in Tekken 7. Law is well described as a death by 1000 cuts character. He can't really snowball damage, and his stubby limbs means he also struggles in the mid range. His lack of a strong, practical high crush also stands out when compared to the other Lords. Law is quite simple to use at lower levels, but his difficulty ramps up exponentially against stronger competition. In particular, mastering the DSS and all its various applications, both in combos and pressure, takes a lot of practice. Law is the epitome of easy to learn, hard to master. If you want a versatile character who can adapt and flow to any situation like water, but with a focus on spicy aggression, then awaken the dragon inside with martial law. Li Chao Lan, or Flamboyant Law, is an eccentric fellow who brings a slippery, evasive twist to Jeet Kune Do with a focus on taunting and beckoning opponents with his exquisite keep out game. Li has all the extraordinary pokes and counter tools you would expect of this archetype, but what underpins many of them is how exceptional they are at going under the opponent's moves. In particular, Silver Low and Gut Polisher lead to full combos on counter hit, whilst Deadly Edge combos even on normal hit. Though be warned, a running theme with Lee is that these conversions are not easy. He's also extremely hard to get in on. Silver Heal is a counter hit launcher with exorbitantly fast whiff recovery, making it exhaustingly hard to punish, with Hitman Stun's transition for an added layer of evasion. Tools like Machine Gun Kicks also supplement his strong keypad and he has Acid Storm and Acid Rain to serve as exemplary whiff punishers from both mid and close range. He's also quite hard to pressure due to tools like Right Cross to Revolution Zui, which can be quite exasperating to deal with. Lee does have some exploitable weaknesses though. His low damage lows can make it a struggle for Lee to mount comebacks, and his slow homing moves only exacerbate his struggles with sidestep left. Lee's execution is also very demanding, his combos, just frames, and key conversions are very exacting, requiring extensive time in the training room. 
Mastering when to use the innate evasion in his moves also demands a lot of experience and expertise. While Lee can certainly be quite excruciating to learn, especially if you want to optimize him, with enough time and practice you'll find a character that's very expressive, explosive, and excellent! Excellent! Oh, excellent! 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 Oh, excellent! Excellent! Lei Wu Long, Hong Kong detective and supercop, is all at once a playful, aggressive, simple, and complex character. What distinguishes Lei more than anything else are his powerful 50 50s with tools like Rave Spin, a tracking hell sweep that launches if he transitions into Drunken. He's good at muscling in with Razor Rush punches, which can transition into his animal stances Snake, Dragon, Panther, Tiger, and Crane. These are generally focused on opening the opponent up, but will require strong conditioning against defensively minded opponents who know how to intercept them. Lei can also create space very quickly with his iconic ha ha step. While opponents are chasing him down, they have to be wary of the reverse lotus, a massive launching kick that can be quite hard to punish due to the follow up and back turn transition. This is also a strong whiff punishment tool. Due to his expansive moveset, Lei can be approached in many different ways. He has strong pokes that are incredibly hard to step, a powerful but unorthodox counter hit game, and slippery evasive tools like Deceiving Swallow and Play Dead. As with many mix up focused characters, though, once you understand the matchup and all of Lei's options, the risk reward is rarely in his favor, while his fundamental tools can't compete with that of most other characters. Lei is deceptively easy to pick up though. He's often played most effectively by just sticking to his core tools, and doesn't have much in the way of execution. He can be as dumb or as deep as you want him to be, a sprawling canvas for the player to express themselves with. Work hard, play hard. That's the Lei Wulong style. Come on! <laughs> Leo Kleisen, the globe-trotting adventurer, is a super flexible character who can be successfully played in a wide variety of styles. Leo is perhaps most comfortable with a more defense-oriented approach from the mid-range though. Fu Hu and Lightning Spear are strong counter-hit tools, with Leo's Magic 4 and Sheng Pao making it hard to approach, the latter being a ranged launcher that's hard for most characters to punish at tip range. Leo also has some strong mix-ups to open up opponents, but they generally don't grant strong Okizeme after, except outside the wall. On top of this, Leo also has decent pokes, a nice selection of parries and sabakis, evasive tools particularly from 4 Bu, can approach with Jin Bu, as well as rush down pressure from transitions into Jinji Du Li. Leo exemplifies Jack of all trades, master of none, since there's nothing on the move list that truly stands out. Except for perhaps Beijia Kao, a fast and powerful punisher from Crouch. While there are some tricky pickups and combo conversions, Leo is also generally quite straightforward to play. Leo is perhaps the most adaptable and open ended character in the game, though, so it's perfect for players of all skill levels to explore Tekken 7 with. Leroy Smith, the attitude adjuster from the Big Apple, is another versatile character designed for beginners, but with a much stronger focus on close range mix ups and aggression. Leroy has all the tools needed to crack the shell on any turtle with his excellent loads. Twin Dragon Acceptance is a fast tracking hell sweep, while Twin Snake Strike leaves him in hermit stance to continue pressuring the opponent, while Falling Fist Sweep is a fast evasive tool to chip away at life bars. Chopping Chain Fist is a strong mid-string to deter opponents from ducking too much, and there's also the looming threat of the floating axe drop, a safe mid-launcher. Leroy is also quite hard to pressure. Twin Dragon Gates will parry anything, and I mean anything, as long as it's a high or a mid. He can keep opponents out quite well with Hermit's Fist and Outcast Arrow, but due to his stubby limbs, struggles to contend in the mid-range. 
Leroy has some decent distance and approach tools like the Viper Bow Kick, but they're either very risky or not particularly rewarding. Since a lot of his key moves knock opponents away, he also struggles to maintain his optimal range and snowball damage outside the wall. Leroy Smith is perfect for new players looking to get into Tekken, as well as old hands who want to fully focus on the opponent, through a versatile character who really shines at close range. You're dumb. Lydia Sobieska, Prime Minister of Poland, is a hyper-aggressive rushdown character who quite literally breaks down the opponent's defenses. Central to her game plan is the Lightning Thrust, a fast mid from range that leaves Lydia in a good position to continue pressuring on block and on hit lets her transition into a powerful stance mix-ups. Once she's conditioned opponents to sit still, she can crack open their guard for free hits, which is especially scary at the wall. Lydia also has powerful lows such as red tape, which can lead to some brutal okizeme. She also has an assortment of parries and sabakis to disrespect opponents who are pressuring her. What really stands out about these is just how much damage they do, especially if the opponent is foolish enough to strike back when their back is to the wall. Lydia's poking game seems subpar on paper, but in practice it's very hard to punish and quite effective. Her biggest weakness is linearity though, with many key moves being vulnerable to sidestep left. She also doesn't get much reward from playing defensively, and is encouraged to go in, which can make her predictable and her core weakness easier to take advantage of. Lydia's game plan is quite simple, but she has a surprising amount of execution for a newcomer in Tekken. If you want a character that goes all in to strike hard and fast, then fight for the people of Poland with Lydia Sobieska. No dobra. Emily de Rochefort, the spoiled daddy's girl from Monaco, is an obnoxious yet elegant fighter who effortlessly dances around the opponent's attacks. Lily's key defining feature is her peerless sidewalk. Lily can waltz around moves that no other member of the cast can, which really forces certain characters to play outside their comfort zone. Her innate evasion is also complemented by an equally evasive moveset, such as the infamous Matterhorn Ascension, though these tend to be very risky. In direct contrast to this, and not complimentary at all, is her collection of lockdown tools such as Submissive Heal, Cloison, and Root of Evil, and can be mixed with Narcissus, a mid-launcher which can be made safe with the Dewglide Cancel. Unfortunately, Lily's greatest strength is also her biggest weakness due to the poor tracking on many key moves. Step guarding is very effective against her pressure. This means that at higher levels, Lily is generally played in a more defensive style. Her new and improved Bellier attack is a great move for keeping opponents at bay, being a long-ranged mid-counter-hit launcher. She can also bait whiffs with Honeysuckle, then strike with excellent punishers like Mars Sword and Peacock Waltz, whilst also occasionally sniping opponents trying to approach her from range with backflip spinning edge. Overall, Lily Rochefort is great for players who enjoy elegantly pirouetting around the opponent, whilst also occasionally making them submit under your heel. Or more likely feet, because we all know what Lily players are into. Yeah! Woo, yay, lucky Chloe. Pop Idol and Troll Extraordinaire is a hyper-annoying little goblin that excels at chipping away at her victims, also while setting them up for some truly comical damage. Her basic jab strings and pokes are all very good at whittling down the opponent's health. From Twist Stance in particular, she can groove and dance all over the opponent's feet. If the opponent fails to keep in step with her, then their luck with Chloe just ran out. 
Chloe can also just knock her dancing partner off their feet from range with the absurd double cat spin or mix it up with air drop heel which leaves her up close and personal for more shenanigans. She's also good at slipping in from a distance with rollback, a whole three frames of it. <sighs> Many of Chloe's big damage opportunities predicate on the opponents losing their cool and striking back when they shouldn't. This is also highlighted in her highly evasive, yet also highly punishable panic moves. Chloe struggles in general with collected and patient players who can weather the storm of inane bullshit that she slings at you. In particular, she can be quite linear and a solid read on her dance moves will make her pay dearly. Due to her stubby limbs and slightly below average movement, she can also struggle in the mid-range. Chloe is generally quite easy to play, but there is some execution behind her rhythm-based inputs. Also, setting up big damage is a little more sophisticated than simply just doing big damage. Lucky Chloe is recommended for the type of people who take pleasure in annoying their opponents with stupid cat memes from 4chan. <laughs> Craig Marduk, the savage Vale Tudo brawler, is good at one thing, getting you on the floor and pounding the ever-loving crap out of you. Marduk has long reach on his hulking arms, though much like Gigas also has a bit of a baby leg complex. Marduk uses his long reach and strong backdash to fight from a distance as a 50-50 machine. While he lacks neutral controlling mid pokes like a down forward one, he makes up for this by having a vast array of powerful match practical lows and correspondingly horrifying mids. He has a disgusting throw game and, of course, his tackle which is hard for even the best players to break consistently. All this, coupled with the massive range on some of his key moves, means that the instant you try to block against Marduk, you are opening yourself up. Marduk's damage potential is absolutely preposterous. Many of his best mids and lows either launch or knock down on counter hit for some inexplicable reason, and he can get some truly absurd Okizeme afterwards. Perhaps more so than any other character, Marduk can rob you blind. Marduk is also surprisingly hard to pressure for a big character, thanks to armored moves like Double Thruster, his unchickenable parry, and the weirdly evasive battering ram. The lack of a neutral mid, sluggishness in close, and his notably high jabs make him a little vulnerable to rushdown and characters who can dictate with repetitive mids, but his sheer robbery factor can often rescue him. Conversely, he's particularly powerful against hit and run characters, because against Marduk, you cannot run and you cannot hide. Marduk isn't a particularly complex character, but will take a bit of time in the lab to suss out his vast usable move pool. If you want big, dumb, explosive damage and unbridled robbery factor, then look no further than Craig Marduk. Master Raven the stealthy secret agent ninja is an elusive, versatile fighter who's hard to pin down and packs a punch. Something that's very unique about Raven is her innately evasive idle stance and backdash. Due to the way she cocks her head back and folds her arms in, she can evade a lot of highs that other characters can't, but on the flip side is more susceptible to lows due to her wide stance. Her innate upper body evasion is also supplemented by an evasive moveset with Black Hole being particularly good at sucking people in to bait whiffs and Shadow Snap Kick being an excellent panic move. Master Raven is also deceptively versatile. She has powerful pokes, strong whiff punishers, hard to punish keep out, excellent counter hit tools, jackknife elbow and fatal blow being particular standouts here as well as some crushingly powerful mix-ups. Quicksand Catastrophe and Buzzsaw being damaging, hard-to-block lows. This is also complemented with yet more mix-ups from Backturned, particularly her ambiguous throw game. Raven can also easily transition into Backturned from her best pokes. On top of all this, her combo damage is way above average, especially at the wall. 
Raven is the epitome of the double-edged sword. Her powerful counter hits and damage are balanced against her lack of conventional tools, as her down forward 2 and magic 4 equivalents both leave her back turned and vulnerable. Her evasive tools, unique parries, and the advantages of her backwards leaning neutral stance are balanced against her tendency for key moves like sudden strike and her rage drive to miss, her below average punishment, and her slightly increased vulnerability to power lows like Akuma's clean hits Kurubushi kick. Being able to handle the complexities of this double-edged blade in the heat of battle without cutting yourself is a task for only the most calm and collected professionals. After all, it's just business. Die. Mission complete. Miguel Caballero Rojo, the Spanish slugger, is an all-out brawler who thrives on close-range aggression and riding momentum to victory. Miguel starts the fiesta with Flanco, his key mid-poke. With this, he can chip away at opponents and bait a counter-response. Once he's conditioned them to sit still, then the party really gets started. From Flanco, Miguel can branch out into multiple string variations constantly keeping the opponent on their toes. In particular, from Savage Stunt, Miguel has access to some devastating mids and lows, as well as some threatening strings from which he can create a dizzying looping offense. While Miguel can't really be characterized as a counter-hit baiting character, many of his best strings end with a combo on counter-hit. This serves as extra disincentive for opponents who are foolish enough to see red and try to strike back at the Matador. While Miguel is very imposing up close, he can struggle to close distance and start his pressure due to the stubby range on his arms. Though this issue is somewhat alleviated by his long dancer's legs and how surprisingly quick he is on his feet. Miguel does have some decent tools to muscle his way in, though they're all quite risky. Miguel has a very direct and straightforward game plan with little regard for execution. If you're looking for a raw, visceral, red-blooded fighter, then take the bull by the horns with Miguel's savage flamenco. I hope you've got your shitting pants on, because Negan Smith is a ruthless, cutthroat bully who's not afraid to fight dirty. Similar to other poking characters, he uses his tenderizer string to keep opponents in check and stop them squirming. Negan can then lock down his prey with moves like Wretched Hammer or the knee-splitting Agony, then crack them open or simply continue to harass them with the aptly named Intimidation Stunts. If opponents dare to challenge Negan, he can either shut that shit straight down with Slaughter Strike or simply blow through them with Grand Slam, a launching, homing, armored high that's also safe on block. When under pressure, Negan takes it like a champ with Walker Maker, another launching armor move, albeit very unsafe. This is a running theme with Negan though, since he really needs to swing for the fences to get big damage. Negan's counter hit game is a bit lacking, and his launches are committal, either through their lack of safety on block or linearity. Also, if opponents are able to react to agony, then oh shit. Negan's life just got a hell of a lot harder, since his lows outside intimidation don't hit very hard. Playing Negan is easy peasy lemon squeezy in every way, so he's great for beginners. If you're looking for a straightforward slugger that feels good, sounds good, then may Lucille give you strength. This should be fun. Nina Williams, the cold-blooded killer, is an assassin who wants to stay in the opponent's face and inch them towards death by degrees. 
key to Nina's pressure is ability to cancel her main pokes into steps and snake shot into rolling dash for near unrivaled pressure. With the proper technique, Nina can create an unrelenting hurricane of blows. Nina then preys on the opponent panicking and pressing at the wrong moment during her oppressive offense to fish for big damage on counter hit with moves like Siren's Kiss, Spear Kick, and Hellbringer. If they're too content with sitting still though, Nina can crack them open with her bone-splitting throw game. Nina struggles in the mid-range though, so Nina players will need to be patient and bait openings with her Hayashida step before launching her offensive. Properly cancelling Nina's attacks to make them airtight will take considerable practice though. On top of this, she also has some very exacting combos and conversions, requires a clean backdash cancel due to being a backsway character, as well as a wide toolkit for specific situations that will take time to properly acclimate to. Nina does have some strings that can be quite abusable in an online environment, but offline against experienced players, she is incredibly demanding. If you're looking for a high-speed, highly technical character who takes no prisoners, then join Nina Williams on a date with death. Noctis Lucis Kylan, crown prince and heir to the throne of Lucis, brings all his royal arms to battle to give him the edge at mid to long range. Approaching Noctis is almost never safe, even from an extreme distance due to the warp strike. Noctis uses the extraordinary range on his greatsword to full effect on Royal Slash, sometimes better known as the and on his spear with Delta Thrust, a long range low. These are both very linear, which is why Noctis also employs the use of his daggers with shadow scissors to stop steppers, which also gives a combo on counter hit. Noctis can also close the gap with ease thanks to Meteor Crush and Roll Dodge. At close range, Noctis can chip away with his surprisingly evasive pokes, all while fishing for counter hits with Quick Stab, baiting whiffs to punish with Royal Edge, and occasionally hacking at the opponent's legs with Shadow Slice, which is neatly mixed with Quick Bash. Noctis' greatest weakness is how all his lows are quite unsafe and generally not very rewarding so he has to take big risks to come back against characters with strong punishment from Crouch. Also, since he lacks a universal down jab, the Lucian Prince can struggle a bit with pressure, though this is alleviated by his good movement. Noctis' long-range weapons make the tricky task of spacing substantially easier, making him another excellent pick for beginners. If you want to bring a knife to a fist fight, as well as a couple of swords, a spear and a shield for good measure too, then join Noctis' party. Paul Phoenix, the Blazing Brawler, is a hard-hitting wrecking ball. He may seem like a mix-up focus character at an initial glance with his signature Demolition Man, but these are used quite sporadically at higher levels and usually only near the wall. For the majority of the time, Paul is best played as a defensive powerhouse, as the all-American gravity-defying haircut might allude to. His generic right uppercut is one of the best in Tekken 7, recovering very quickly and even having quite a bit of evasion, making it hard to get in on. The iconic Death Fist is also an excellent whiff punisher should the opponent overextend. This is all complemented by blisteringly powerful counter hit tools such as Kawara Goma, which can be performed from a backsway, further feeding into Paul's defensive playstyle, and Gengetsu, an evasive low that can lead to full combos on counter hits. Paul isn't exactly known for subtlety, so while he's great at landing big burst damage, he doesn't have much in the way of effective quick low pokes to whittle away at an opponent's health while maintaining momentum. As Julia can tell you though, this isn't the worst problem a character can have. In many ways, Paul can be seen as the inverse of Law, who's always emphasized speed and aggression over Paul's focus on raw, unbridled power. While his game plan is relatively simple, Paul players will need a solid grasp on how to effectively bait whiffs through movement, as well as a clean backdash cancel since he's a backsway character. 
if you want big all-American moves that do big all-American damage for big all-American mileage, then hitch a ride with Paul Phoenix. Now bring it on, ya aliens! Shaheen is the third and final of the Lore Trio. He has all the excellent pokes and counter-hit tools you'd expect of a Lore, but what sets Shaheen apart is his tall height, affording longer range on all of his most important tools. The uniquely powerful Okizeme after slide, making for stronger comeback potential, a stance called Sneak that's mainly used to initiate light pressure and bait rudimentary counter hit traps, as well as being by far the easiest of the three to use. Shaheen is a very no-frills, fundamentals-focused character. This works both for and against him, in that he's very simple and immediate to play, but can't really exhaust opponents by throwing the kitchen sink at them in terms of crazy strings and options. Aside from developing a fast slide input and a little practice needed for optimal sneak cancels and combos, he also has little in the way of execution, making him yet another good pick for beginners. If you're looking for a simple, direct, and robust character designed to get to the heart of Tekken as quickly as possible, then fly with the Saudi Falcon, Shaheen. <laughs> Steve Fox, the British boxer, can be approached in many different ways, but what underpins his entire moveset is the singular focus around landing well-timed counter hits. Whether Steve is up close and personal, peppering you with pokes and peekaboo pressure, or playing a slower game by running away and putting up shields thanks to how Flicker can drastically reduce the recovery on key moves, in particular the notorious quick hook, He's always aiming to tune into his opponent's rhythm and land counter punches for big damage. Along with Flicker, another factor that makes Steve hard to punish is how slippery and evasive he can be. For example, he can immediately cancel into ducking from Crescent Hook, a fast mid that can lead to combos on counter hits. He can also use ducks to slip in from mid range, as well as weaves to deftly evade opponents' attempts to pressure him up close. Special notes must also go to Steve's second Rage Drive, which is quite possibly the best in the entire game. Steve lacks intimidating lows outside the wall though, which means he can struggle to make a comeback when at a life deficit. Without Rage, he also can't launch punish many moves that other characters can. Success with Steve hinges on solid fundamentals, a keen sense of timing, adaptability in knowing whether to play offensively or defensively, as well as some highly demanding execution to convert into a combo from some of his most important moves. Whether he's a swarmer, slugger, outboxer, or counterpuncher, Steve Fox is every great boxer all rolled into one. So if you're looking to master the sweet science, then glove up with the Gov. Ling Xiaoyu, the Dancing Phoenix, is quite simply the queen of evasion. No other character in the game is as good at denying the opponent their turn with her notorious Art of Phoenix stance, making her a fun character to play against hot-headed opponents, especially when paired with liberal use of her exceptionally annoying taunts. Opponents will need to keep several low-hitting attacks in mind to beat her out of this. Ling also has some very evasive and very annoying pokes in Belly Chop and Feather Fan, the latter being almost impossible to reliably punish for most characters. As powerful as these moves are in isolation though, they both force Xiao Yu into back turned after, which is fairly easy to safely disengage from afterwards. Xiao Yu doesn't have particularly threatening back turn mix ups without rage, and struggles to both close distance or snowball damage. That is, outside of her devious post-combo Okizeme. Good Ling players will need to devote a lot of time into building up their repertoire of setups on a variety of different stages. They'll also need strong spatial awareness to actually use them in a match. If you're a lab monster though, and enjoy getting on people's nerves, then Ling is most certainly the character for you.
Yoshimitsu, leader of the Manji clan and possibly the world's coolest sword-wielding cephalopod, at least in this Tekken, is a squirming Swiss army knife who encourages boundless creativity with his idiosyncratic and often bizarre moveset. Yoshimitsu has an enormous bag of ninja tricks hiding under those slimy tentacles to mystify and bamboozle even experienced players. While Yoshimitsu has a tool for every occasion, he's most geared towards lulling the opponent into a false sense of security before robbing them blind like the slippery aquatic thief that he is. His flash is an incredibly unique tool, being the fastest move in Tekken. This can be used to stop an aggressor dead in their tracks before they even know what hit them. Mastering Flash alone and all its various applications is akin to the depth of playing an entire other character. The possibilities are limitless from just this one move. Yoshimitsu can also squirm out of pressure like no other with spinning evade, albeit at the cost of some health. Though he can also regain health through meditating, draining the opponent's life force, or just commit suicide and spill his squiddy guts all over the floor because why the hell not? Like Lei, Yoshimitsu is another sprawling canvas that allows a player to express themselves. Except, whereas the complexity is very much optional with the Drunken Master, Yoshimitsu's basic generic tools are somewhat lacking, forcing players to get creative and dabble in his quirkiness, which can often be risky. Unpredictability and staying one step ahead of your opponent is key to being an effective Manji Master. The moment you fall into patterns is the moment you lose. So detach body from mind and stay unpredictable. Zafina, the Corrupted Mystic, is a lithe, spindly assassin who can effortlessly slip through the cracks in her opponent's attacks, only to strike back with her own venomous bites. What really stands out about Zafina is her incredible movement. In particular, her backdash both covers far more space than usual, and also due to the way Zafina tucks her legs in, she can safely disengage from pressure that no other character can. This innate movement evasion is complemented by several highly evasive launchers, though they are naturally more committal. Whilst weaving in and out of the opponent's attacks, Zafina can chip away at them with tools like Inanna's Fury, a massively long-range low, or Bloody Scythe and Shamshir, an incredibly solid poking strain. Zafina can also lock down movement with Roundhouse Kick, or start pressuring the opponent through stance transitions with Sagari Smash to Scarecrow and Earwig Pincer to Mantis. The latter can also lead to full combos on counter hit, and this is yet another of Zafina's many strengths, with the astonishingly fast backhand thrust and Manticore being other dangerous counter hit tools. Safina's main weakness is her lackluster punishment from Crouch, as well as difficulty mounting comebacks when at a severe life deficit due to a lack of power loads. While Safina may initially seem like a technical character due to her stances, she can be played very straightforwardly by sticking mostly to the tools listed here. If you're looking to slip in and out of pressure whilst also tangling your hapless prey in a web of hurt, then your fate has already been decided with Zafina. very much for watching. This video was the work of a team of professionals working together with a common respect and appreciation for fighting games. It wouldn't have been possible though without the support of our patrons, so a massive salute goes out to all these wonderful people. If you'd like to support our upcoming projects and also gain access to bonuses such as these lovingly crafted PDFs of the scripts, or early access to our videos, then please consider supporting us on Patreon. Have a wonderful day everyone, and we'll catch you on the next one.